Okay, let's talk about this a little bit more, but in terms of inversions. Now we've looked at inversions a bunch uh, with chords, and even before that we've looked at inversions with intervals, but I wanna talk about inversions one more time, just talking about intervals. Kind of like what we did with the visual landmarks, I wanna give you a couple quick tricks to identify intervals, inversions of intervals. So four main points uh, for this video. First, perfect intervals invert to perfect intervals. They're always perfect. Invert this interval, and remember inverting means taking uh, one note and so and reverse changing the order is all it really means of the note. So I'm either gonna take this F and put it up an octave or I'm gonna take this C and put it down an octave. Either way, a perfect fifth is gonna stay a perfect interval. So if this F goes up to a C, or sorry, if this F goes up an octave, now my interval is a fourth, because a fifth inverts to a fourth, but it's still a perfect interval, because a perfect fifth inverts to a perfect fourth. Perfect interval is a perfect interval. If I do that the other way, and I take the C down an octave, now again, I have a perfect fourth, because a perfect fifth inverts to a perfect fourth. It stays perfect. What about an octave. An octave is a perfect interval, right? We just learned that. What happens if I invert an octave? I get a unison, which is also perfect, by the way, right? Because if I take one of these notes and I put it down an octave, I get a unison. I take this one and put it up an octave, I get a unison. So unison is also a perfect interval. Important to remember. Okay, point number two, uh, major intervals invert to minor intervals. So here's a major third. If I invert this by taking this F and putting it up here, I now have a minor sixth. Okay, so if it was major and you invert it, it's now minor, always. Always a major interval inverted becomes a minor interval. Let's look at um, an interval of a seventh. This is a major seventh. If I invert it, let's take this E down an octave, I now have a minor second because an inversion of a seventh becomes a second and it was major, so now it's minor. Okay, so if, if a major interval, whenever you invert a major interval, it turns into a minor interval. That's point two. Point three, uh, the opposite is always true. Minor intervals invert to major intervals. Let's do something a little out of key here. Let's do a minor seventh, right? I lowered that, so now we have a minor seventh here. If I invert that, oops, what we're gonna have is I take that E flat down an octave. What we now have is a major second, E flat to F. That's a whole step apart, which is a major second. So minor intervals invert to major intervals. Okay, and the last trick, and this is an important one, this has to do with the numbers, right? So the way a seventh inverts to a second, a fifth inverts to a fourth, a sixth inverts to a third. Here's how you remember what inverts to what. Take the two numbers, they gotta add up to nine. Uh, it's just kind of a weird mathematical thing. Let's go down here. Uh, a fifth. If I'm gonna invert a fifth and I just wanna know what it's gonna end up on, five plus what equals nine? The answer is four. So a fifth inverts to a fourth. If I take a sixth and I wanna say, if I invert that, what's gonna be my interval? Six plus what equals nine? The answer is three. So it's gonna end up being a third. The two intervals just mathematically always, always add up to nine. Now don't get that confused with adding up to a ninth, the interval of a ninth. That's not true. Uh, it's just a numbers game here, not an intervals game. Uh, five inverts to four because that equals nine. Six inverts to three because that equals nine. It's just a mathematical thing. Okay, so remember those things about, about inversions and you will be in good shape.